Hello and welcome to the video. This is going to be uh, just a general understanding video of Daisy for people who are coming because of the brand new 1.0 thrown on top of it. If that's got you interested in the game and you haven't been a part of the five years of development, this game can seem like a lot. So this is going to be what comes up when you first launch the game. There's the credits, settings, and exit the game. Then you're going to have some characters here that you can, well, you're going to have one character here that you can tab through. These don't really mean much. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that on your HUD, all this stuff is enabled. I don't, I don't know why it comes disabled. For other people, it's all been enabled. For some people, it's been all disabled. Me personally, it was all disabled when I first got into 1.0. So, you want to enable all that. This stuff, you don't really need enabled. Maybe player messages and admin messages. I believe the admin messages send when the server or game message. Just turn them all on. There's just going to be a little text box in the bottom left that'll show you the messages from this. And then this is just your information that you get while you're playing. So you want to keep that stuff. Audio should be all set to go. You want to make sure that voice volume is cranked all the way up because some people got some shitty mics. So, then in video, do it to what your computer is set to. You can toy around with this. Make sure the resolution is right. Do not crank the brightness all the way up because it just it looks like shit. Turn it up to a point where it's slightly dark around the corners. If you turn it up past that, you're going to just get a, a grainy effect at night time. For some reason, in every other game in the world, I do not need V-Sync enabled. I can just disable it. In this game, though, for some reason, you need to have it enabled. Or else you're going to get these nice tear lines along the bottom and the top of your screen. Anytime you do quick spin, quick 180 spin, you're going to get a nice tear line. At least that's been my experience with the game, that there's a nice tear line where the, the top and the bottom of the screen don't match. Color depth, set that to whatever you prefer. Um, I just set it to high. Object detail. Now, you can keep that really based off your system you want that terrain detail I have no idea why I have that on extreme you can turn terrain detail down to poor it looks like it just affects the grass back there in the low so low to poor texture detail you want this higher the object detail also affects how you view distant objects. So if you turn that up all the way, you can see in the background there, it might get a little clearer. And then it, on poor, it just looks terrible back there. So you want to have the object detail as high as your computer will let you. The texture detail just affects how nice those textures back there are going to look. So that's not quite as important. The cloud detail, it, you, don't, you don't need to see the clouds. You can have them on low or poor. It's not a big deal. Shadows, that is just for your own personal viewing. So if you're on a lower end PC, turn that down. Do whatever you need. Do whatever works for you so that you can keep that nice 60 FPS. It looks nicer playing on medium, I find, than it does playing on like poor, where it looks like there is no shadows whatsoever. Texture filtering, 
just removes hard angles. It's it's good for spotting players a little bit to have that lower, I think. But it also doesn't look quite as nice. So I like it higher. But again, this is not a really important one. It just affects frame rate. Terrain surface detail. Bump that all the way down to either low or poor. I find with poor, it sometimes looks like your character is going through the ground. With low, it looks like the ground is shifted lower and your character isn't glitching through the ground. But that's... It's up to you. I usually play with poor. I was just trying out low. If you go higher, it doesn't really make a big difference. It's just slight frame impact. So lower end PCs, just crank that down to poor. Post process. Ah. Older DayZ versions. I'm not quite sure where to put this yet. Older DayZ versions. The SMAA worked wonderfully. It worked better than the FXAA. So, I'm not quite sure where to put that yet. I've been playing on medium. I've been getting good frames with that. I'll try it on high for now. But, it, I would say set that to medium. It's, I, I have to toy around with that some more hardware you can just turn that to low it it doesn't really affect what what the game looks like that much at least in my opinion it it doesn't do much now the foliage smoothing that's something that just makes the game look nicer to me it it makes the shadows look more deep it makes it feel like there's stuff in there when it's disabled, it looks like just a bright ass bush. Turn that on. It feels like there's actually some depth in there, so I like it. Ambient occlusion, just turn that down to low. Post process, just turn that down to low. Apply that. Controls, you shouldn't really need to change the key binds. They have it all set up to work on a controller. They've dumbed down the control scheme so much that you don't even need to mess with it. It's it's simple. I like the old control scheme more, but this is what we got now. So, that's about it for settings. That is it for settings. So, you can click back, and then, if you feel like it, you can waste your time customizing a character, because you can't actually play as this character. <coughs> Uh, when you first get into the game, there's going to be the play button here. You can't just click play. It doesn't do anything for you. Click on the change server. And if you're going to figure out how to play Daisy, I would say avoid the community servers. Because they already have mods and stuff on them. And that's just... A whole nother complicated side that we don't need to get into yet. There's already stuff that you need to go into the launcher, the daisy launcher, and add mods. It's a lot like Arma, where you add those mods and then you can play on that server. In my experience with the community servers is I played it for like two hours on one server. Well, I started on one server. It crashed in five minutes. Changed to a different server, and then that server crashed. 10 minutes and it would reset about every 10 minutes so the only good thing is they can go up to whatever number of slots they want and they can go down to whatever number of slots they want so this is probably somebody playing just with their three friends just figuring out what's going on in the game so then there's LAN. Unless you set up a server in your house, you're not going to use that. So, on, under the official tab, this is where you'll get 
Daisy Standalone, the game as it is made. You'll generally be able to find a couple medium to high pops throughout the entire day right now. I bet that it will go down as time progresses because they didn't do that much to make the game better, but there is a strong fan base. So this server amount might go down in the future, but I'll also go over to the filters and I suggest that you take that ping setting and it's going to come out on disabled here. Click that right arrow so you get to less than 100 because it's not worth it to play on a server with a ping greater than 100. Favorited, if you turn that on, I think I have a couple, f yeah, I had experimental servers favorited. You can favorite servers with those little stars there to select the servers that you have a base on or that you really enjoy. So then, if you have a couple of friends that you're playing with, you can either show their server that they're on, or you can go into the wonderful Steam menu, and I don't think I have anybody playing Daisy right now. But you click their name, you go down to that Daisy, instead of Frostpunk, it would say Daisy, and then you can click Join Game in one of the options down there. So, I suggest, if you're looking to play with a specific friend, join them that way, get on a Skype call, a Discord call, whatever you're using, join them that way, figure out where they are, have them show you what to do. Um, I'm back in a community, I don't know how I got there. Make sure you're an official. Battle I protected, all the official servers are Battle I protected, community servers have the choice passworded all the official servers should be without a password so you can just ignore that tab community they can have passwords or not I have it showing hide passworded servers but they're up there so these filters don't work <coughs> so proper version match this doesn't work either so there are experimental servers like this Daisy US Southwest 0-5. It doesn't work. That it's experimental. It might be in 1.0 right now, but it's on a separate shard. They use the word shard there to describe it. There is the public shard. Oh, that says private too. So they fuck something up here. Um, so the experimental servers, they're on a different shard. Your character that you're playing with will not go from the experimental to the standard server, to the 1.0. 1.0.15, 1 4 O's. It will not transfer between your experimental and your non-experimental, your base release, your standard so do not join the experimental servers you might be able to join them but your character will be locked to that server so proper version match doesn't work you just gotta wor watch out for those experimental servers now the full servers you can't join a full server but you can queue up for a full server so if your friend is on a full server go ahead and wait usually I've, depending on how many peoples are in the queue, you shouldn't have to wait too long. If it's five people, give it seven minutes, ten minutes, you'll be in. It's not terrible. But then you can also hide full servers, and that actually works. So, you can do that. And here is a fantastic bug already where I can't see a single server. Switch over, come back. Sometimes that fixes it, not this time. What is broken? What is broken? If you click back and go back to change server, 
should reset everything. <coughs> hmm. It's not Wednesday, is it? No. It's Saturday. It's... They aren't doing server maintenance on Saturdays. They do server maintenance, like, Wednesdays. Oh, it's the friends sh friends playing. See? There it is. That, that was the issue. Friends playing was on show. I don't have any friends playing. So, that won't work. Now I'll get servers. Um, public, all of these are private for some reason. So if you click on that, you can see the shard. Then you can see your character alive. It's most likely going to say survivor or none. Um, that's about it. You can see the mode. This is the first third person. That means you can switch between first and third person. There are other servers where it is third person or first person only. So between the first person that th this stuff makes no sense. So the experimental servers are on the same version right now as the non-experimental as the base game is. So maybe you can switch between them. I'm not sure. But these say official. This is this is a mess. If you're getting used to the game, I would say play first and third person. It says private here, which implies that you can't switch servers, but you will keep that same character. You can see the character alive, Mythos 2K, is on both those servers. That means I will play as Mythos 2K on that server. So, accelerated time, you can see this time is accelerated. It should have a couple little arrows there. You can see the arrows on this server with the moon. You can see the arrows, and that shows you that it's accelerated time. But over on official, they don't have that. There should be arrows with that sun showing you that it's 6.2 times speed so something is screwed up somewhere and they aren't sharing why or they aren't fixing it <coughs> so for the true daisy experience you're going to want to find a server and click with decent ping make sure that first third person if you're getting used to the game and go ahead make sure it's highlighted in red because when it's red that means you selected the server you can make it red by left clicking it sometimes it's just a pain in the butt and then you click play <coughs> 